across this country, including here in Winnipeg. Can I just jump Supporters in are taking their message on Prairie Green Landfill, north of the city. Um, what would you do when it comes to searching that landfill um, for Morgan Harris, Mercedes Mayor? What so I, I'll jump in. I, you know, this has been uh, very difficult decisions. I would love to be able to say yes to everything, but because of safety reasons, the answer just has to be no. Um, and uh, I can tell you that, you know, from the report itself that people um, refer to, there are cons it says, and I quote, there are considerable risks due to exposure to toxic chemicals and asbestos, and a successful outcome is not guaranteed. So for those reasons, we had to say no to this. Very difficult, but those are the decisions that need to be made as a Premier of Manitoba. Mr. Canoe. The PCs are trying to use this issue to divide us. <laughs> Under their time in office, they've picked winners and losers. Just look at healthcare. Rural Manitoba has been a loser when it comes to healthcare. You can drive up and down Highway 3 and there's no emergency rooms open. South Winnipeg has been a loser when it comes to healthcare under the PC's choices. And I do not agree. I think we need to build a province for everybody. So yes, I'm running to fix rural healthcare. I'm running to open an emergency room in South Winnipeg and I will search the landfill. But here's the thing. We don't have to agree on everything as Manitobans to work together on the big things, like fixing our health care system. Look, uh, the Premier and the PCs have made a series of disingenuous arguments about why they couldn't search landfill. First, they said it was a federal jurisdiction. Then they said it would interfere with the courts. And now they're saying it's not safe, and none of those things are true. We've talked to the experts. They know it can be done safely. If the... If, if there's a problem with toxic chemicals in that landfill, it means that our landfill shouldn't be that way either. This is about fundamental justice and making sure that every single Manitoban, and this is the thing is the difference between whether it's saying that First Nations are a federal jurisdiction, they're also Manitobans. And we have an obligation to treat them. This would not be a political debate in any other province. There are other provinces where it just gets funded. We're talking about, we've said $42 million to, as an initial uh, an initial engagement or initial commitment. We're the only, we're the first party to do that, and the, I don't know that any other party has even named a figure. I'll give you last word. Yeah, in the report itself, it says that there are considerable risks due to exposure to toxic chemicals and asbestos and that there's no guaranteed outcome. So what these individuals are saying is that, and there's in the report it says, it talks about $184 million. So what these individuals are saying is that they would go so ahead and spend that. So where are they going to find the money for that? But what I would say is that we need to focus on providing the supports to prevent this from happening in the first place. We've settled more land through the treaty land entitlement in the last seven years than the NDP ever did in 17 years. And we're making meaningful uh, progress in the way of economic reconciliation in the areas of forestry, uh, revenue sharing and mineral development partnerships, real partnerships with, with First Nations communities. Think of Gambler, First Nation, Russell, the first potash mine. That's real progress and prosperity for First Nations people. For me, I'd like to focus on economic reconciliation and reconciliation in healthcare. Economic reconciliation for me is about jobs. I come from a community where everyone wants to work, but there aren't enough jobs. And so we need to create more opportunity province-wide so everyone can have the dignity and also the paycheck that comes along with work. And when it comes to health care, we know that there are so many challenges for all Manitobans, but including Indigenous Manitobans. And I'm very lucky to be, to be married to a wonderful Indigenous physician and surrounded by many other Indigenous health leaders who I think have something powerful to contribute to moving the needle on health care for everybody in this province and I think reconciliation is about bringing people together. Does that, that reconciliation way. also include um, a health care indigenous uh, board if you will something along the lines of shared health so you know indigenous issues within health care are absolutely guaranteed in that I think BC's done. They have First Nations Health Authority in British yeah. Columbia I think it has to be arrived at through negotiation right it has to be with the consent and with the vision from indigenous communities themselves at the same time, what we don't need in healthcare is more bureaucracy, right? We have too much bureaucracy in healthcare as it is, and we need to de-emphasize the bureaucracy in healthcare and reinvest in the front lines with the nurses and doctors, the health leaders right at the bedside who are going to improve care for you, the patient. That's the, 
I mean, it's quite funny. I mean, this has been a confusing election for some folks because the the NDP have said that they're going to follow the PCs budget, and Mr. Canu is literally repeating one of Brian Pallister's promises. They actually have the same slogan too. Brian Pallister said he'd cut at the top and move to the front line, and it never happened. We don't. It's not just a problem. Uh, a question of cutting bureaucracy. The reason why our bureaucracy doesn't work is party because it's all paper and people are wasting their time on that. But when it comes to the commitments of either of these parties, both of them have said they're both promising massive tax cuts. They're both being warned that if they actually get elected, that they're going to face austerity. So I don't actually know how they're going to pay for any of these promises, including those promises for economic reconciliation or, or, health, or health. We're going to invest in health care. Heather Stephenson? I think uh, one of the challenges is, and we need to we, we need to all agree on this, that the federal government has responsibility uh, for people on First Nations, and I think they have ne neglected I, their I, no, responsibility. I, to, I actually have to say right something. Now, right now, I was just up in, in Island Lake um, last week visiting with communities there that are struggling, not getting, not even having potable water. These are these are the the uh, the challenges uh, that are facing First Nations. We want to be there to help them. We want to make sure that those First Nations are are prosperous, and we're going to do that through economic reconciliation.